So in today's video, we're going to go over five type of buffers that are found in a lot of your guitar pedal circuits. We're also going to be seeing how they work and what their strengths and weaknesses are in regards to designing or modifying a pedal. So let's get into it. Firstly, what is a buffer? Well, a buffer is a circuit that presents high impedance to the guitar pickups and has a low impedance output drive for anything in the signal path coming up next. And it tries to do all this while keeping the gain close to unity, which means the volume coming in should be the same as the volume going out. Well, why does this matter? Well, it matters because this is a method to prevent loading of your pickups, which can lead to tone suck, and as well as preventing the loss and definition of the guitar sound itself. So let's take a look at some of these circuits in LT Spice. So here we have an example of an N-channel JFET buffer. We're going to use a 2N5457, but pretty much any small signal JFET will do. Below we have the power supply, and this will be the power supply we use in all five of our examples. We're going to give it 9 volts, and we got our set of resistors here acting as a voltage divider, which will give us our bias voltage. So this is how this works. First, our signal comes in on the input and goes through this input coupling capacitor and then enters the gate pin of this JFET right here. The JFET is actually being set to bias by this bias resistor, obviously getting pulled to the voltage bias. The signal then goes out the source pin and out this output coupling capacitor and then out the actual output. You may notice this source resistor here, R4. Uh, it can be pretty much any value between 3.3K and 10K where it is exactly isn't going to be super hypercritical, but the lower the resistance, the more it can drive the output, um, the more push it can deliver. So because the output signal here is leaving the source pin of the JFET, you may hear the circuit right here called a source follower. And also because the power is coming up from here on the drain pin, you might also see this called a common drain buffer. So JFET buffers, like all things, have their pros and cons. So what are some of the pros? Well, one is a JFET has really, really high input impedance, probably one of the highest. Um, the only thing that's really setting the input impedance is the actual resistor here for the bias. So you can basically slap in any large value resistor, like a one mega ohm resistor, and there you go. That's, your, that's pretty much going to be your input impedance to this circuit. This is really nice, especially if you're putting this at the, at the uh, front of your effects pedal, because that's going to guarantee that your effect pedal itself has a very high impedance value, which is usually desired. Another thing that's great about this design is there's not a lot of parts here. So keeping it simple, it's not going to use a lot of floor space on your actual PCB, or if you're using a Vero board or something like that, or that might be important to you. Uh, however, with those two pros, here are some of the cons. Uh, the first thing is the output impedance on this circuit. It's not bad. It works. It's good. But there's some better ones that we'll see here down the line. But the biggest con with this circuit is the fact that if you're trying to use a through-hole JFET, they're becoming very hard to find. Is becoming an issue. Uh, you can find them in surface mount, and you can find surface mount to through-hole adapters if you're not uh, terrified to do anything like small surface mount work. But if you're trying to do this entirely through hole, uh, things like uh, 2N5457s are hard to find, J201s are really hard to find, and because they're harder to find, they're a little bit more expensive. So for a, a part of a circuit that just basically keeps the sound look, looking normal, uh, is using an expensive piece worth it to you? That's up to you. But anyways, let's move on to the next buffer. The next kind of buffer we'll look at is one that's made from a bipolar junction, or BJT, NPN transistor. So again, this works much like the JFET buffer. The signal comes in here on the input, goes through this coupling capacitor. The base of the transistor gets biased by this resistor, and the signal comes in at the base. Then it leaves the emitter pin, goes out this coupling output capacitor, and then the signal leaves. Similarly to the JFET buffer, we have a resistor down here getting pulled to ground. Uh, this is coming out of the emitter pin, so it's called the emitter resistor. And the emitter resistor can be anywhere between 3.3K and 10K, just like before. And also like before, the, the lower towards 3.3K it is, the more drive it can push on the output signal. 
Because the output signal is leaving the emitter pin, sometimes the circuit is called an emitter follower, and because the power is coming in on the collector pin, it can also be called a common collector buffer. So like JFET buffers, NPN BJT buffers have their pros and cons too. So what are they? Well pros, the transistor itself, yeah, they're cheap and easy to come by, and it can use pretty much any small signal transistor. The difference in sound is going to be negligible, so you could put in like a 2N3904 like we have here, or a 2N5088, or a 2N2222, they'll, they'll all work. The only difference might be that the higher the gain on the transistor itself, the closer to unity gain it'll get, but it'll actually never hit unity gain, which we'll get into that here when we get to the cons. Um, but another one of the pros is the uh, output and pins drive ability. So the output and pins value itself is not great. It's not bad. It'll work. Um, but the ability to drive more stuff on the output is where the BJT transistor really shines. This is kind of why you'll see on a lot of boss pedals that the last stage will just be an NPN transistor buffer uh, for that very reason, because it wants to drive the pedal that's coming on next, which could be a, uh, a drive hog, so to speak. <laughs> Anyways, uh, going to cons, uh, the input and pins on transistors that are BJTs are not great at all. They're actually pretty terrible. <laughs> um, and as we mentioned before, the unity gain is also not perfect. So that is not considered uh, a desirable quality when you're making a buffer, but when I say it's not perfect, it's still like, uh, 99, 98, 95% at the same volume. There's a smidge of a volume drop, but nothing too terribly bad. But there is to say there's better options when it comes to that. And then the last uh, of the cons here for BJT transistors is their poor power supply noise rejection uh, coming from an AC supply. Uh, if the circuit's being powered by a battery, there's no issue. But if you have an AC wall or type power supply and there's not a lot of proper uh, filtering going on before we get to these buffers, uh, that's gonna get, that's gonna be a bad day. <laughs> so that's one of the cons for the NPN transistors. All right, well, let's look at another one here. The next kind of buffer we'll look at is just another form of the BJT transistor. This time though, we're gonna be looking at PNP transistors as opposed to NPN. Now, typically people more often than not would use an NPN to build a buffer. But when you're dealing with guitar pedals, it's often that you get to that point in your building career <laughs> where you start to play with your manium transistors. And in a lot of cases, we might purchase some of these from a place of inconsistent quality, and it's gonna be that way because of how these transistors are brought into the market in the first place. In these cases, you will likely get a transistor or two that are either too leaky or too low gain to make your prized fuzz face clone. <laughs> Speaking from experience here. Well, here's a, some potential use for those uh, low gain and leaky PNP germanium transistors. Just like an NPN, our signal comes in on the input, passes through the coupling capacitor, goes to the base of the transistor, leaves the emitter pin, goes out the output coupling capacitor, and then leaves out the output. Obviously the base of the transistor here being biased with the biased resistor. And again, we have an emitter resistor here that can be between 3.3K and 10K. Same rules apply where the lower it is, the more drive it has. And just like the NPN example here, because the signal is leaving the emitter pin, this is called an emitter follower or because the well ground power, if you will, uh, is coming in here on the collector pin, it's called a common collector buffer but with a PMP. So we already identified one pro for using a PMP transistor buffer, that is using germanium PMP transistors that have either low gain or are too leaky to be used in any of your projects. But there are a lot of cons. So one of them again is just like the NPNs, we have low impedance issues. It's still not good. The unity gain there is still isn't perfect. The poor power supply noise rejection issue is still present. Um, and between the NPN and the PNP, the NPNs have better output and pins handling. The PNPs can still do it. It's still within tolerances for your pedal. It's just an NPN would be better for the job. But then again, I can still hear people who are using those germanium PNP transistor buffers complain. My that... But now let's look at another kind of buffer. 
The next kind of buffer we're going to look at is one that uses an N-channel MOSFET as the buffer. And we're going to use the BS-170 because they're cheap, small, and easy to come by. It works just like the rest of these ones here where the signal comes in on the input, goes through this input coupling capacitor, gets to the gate of the MOSFET, which is being biased by this bias resistor, leaves out the source pin, goes out this output coupling capacitor, and then out the output signal itself. But there are a couple of things in here that are a little bit different than like the JFET buffer that we started with here. Firstly, our source resistor, you notice, is actually lower than 3.3K. We can actually get away with that because MOSFETs have a little bit more oomph behind them uh, that JFETs don't seemingly have in this case for buffers. Uh, another thing that you'll also notice, though, is the extra part we had to add here, which is a 9.1 volt Zener diode. Now, you don't have to use this exact one. You can use any 9.1 volt Zener diode that's rated for around a watt or half a watt even probably would work. Uh, but this is needed because MOSFETs uh, are really, really sensitive to static electricity on that gate pin. So this guy kind of stops that from happening. Much like the JFET buffer before, the sound is leaving the source pin. So this can be called a source follower. And because the voltage is coming in on the drain pin, this can be called a common drain buffer. Now, one thing to note about MOSFETs is MOSFETs in their construction, internally, they have a lot of high capacitance. Uh, basically the space between their electrodes. And depending on the MOSFET itself, it's different from, diff from some to another, uh, there may be some high frequency roll off due to this fact. Now most transistors, there's something called the Miller effect that's in the design of how they are that multiplies that capacitance outside of the human audible hearing range. But in MOSFETs, some of them, that's not the case. It may roll off just a smidge of the high frequencies. So that we can list actually as part of the cons because a uh, buffer is supposed to be sound going in, should be the sa sound going out, and there's going to be a little bit of a modification there, a little bit of tone shaping, if you will. Um, but again, it's dependent on the MOSFET. So let's look at some of the pros here first, actually. Uh, they're really good with input and pins. Actually, probably some of the best input and pins you can get on a buffer will be out of this because you can put really high uh, resistors here on that gate pin and it still works. Um, and then they're also common and easy to find. You can find this MOSFET in pretty much any box store out there. Uh, and you don't have to use the BS-170. Any, again, small signal MOSFET will do the same job and it'll sound practically the same. Now, some of the drawbacks, aside from the fact that we have that high frequency roll-off potential, uh, there's more parts that's used here because now we have to have a Zener diode. And the output and pins on the, on the MOSFET is okay. Uh, it's not great, but there's better decisions that you could have used if uh, output and pins is your main goal. But it's still within tolerance for most guitar pedals, so you can see that in a lot of cases. Anyways, let's move on. All right, so for this section, I'm going to start off with a little bit of history about the op amp, which was invented in the 40s. Bell Labs filed a patent for it in 41. And many consider the first practical op amp to be the vacuum tube K2-W, which is invented in 52 by George Philbrick. Texas Instruments eventually invent the integrated circuit in 58, which allows a Bob Wylar at Fairchild Electronics to invent the UA702 solid state monolithic op amp in 1963. That development led to the UA741, which a lot of us pedal builders know as the LM741, which was released in 1968, and since then, op amps have become cheap and easy to come by, and we use them in a lot of things, one of which are buffers. So as you can guess, for our final buffer option, we're going to use a non-inverting op amp buffer, also known as a voltage follower circuit. In this case, I'm going to shamelessly plug our 10-minute buffer, which is exactly one of these kinds, uh, which we'll have a link in the description below. But suffice it to say, this is a pretty easy to use buffer. It works like the rest. We have the signal coming in on the input, going through a coupling capacitor, going into the non-inverting input pin of your op amp, which is also pulled to bias with a bias resistor. Uh, we have a negative feedback loop connecting the non-invert, or sorry, the inverting pin to the output. And then the signal leaves the output, going through this output capacitor, and then out the end of the pedal. With this circuit, I'll start with the bad news first and give you the cons. This is not a discrete component, and because it is an IC, it takes up more space on your circuit. That's it. 
But at the cost of that, here are the pros. Firstly, the input impedance is fantastic, especially if you're using a JFET op amp, like a TL series. Uh, that will give you probably some of the best input impedance you can possibly ask for. Output impedance on these things are fantastic, somewhere down in the tens of ohms in a lot of cases. Another thing that's nice is this has the fewest uh, parts in the circuit altogether, uh, so that's good for floor space on your PCB. Uh, they're easy to come by, you can find op amps pretty much anywhere, and unlike a lot of the other ones, the unity gain is actually true unity gain. Now, because of this, some people complain that the op amp buffers sound cold and sterile, uh, that discrete buffers sound more lively, but that's something I'll let you folks decide. Uh, to me, I think that might be just an argument of mojo. I hope this helps in understanding the buffer circuit and how it works in your pedals. It's good to know these circuits, not just for designing them, but if you're trying to fault diagnose a pedal by going over its schematic, now, if you see one of these, you know what to expect when you go to probe it or get voltage readings and such off of it. So that's it for this video. If you like these kind of guitar pedal electronics videos, press that like button. Or if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'd love to know where you folks are that are watching these videos, so if you get a chance, post those down in the comments below. It's always interesting to know. Also, what kind of buffers do you prefer in your pedals and why? We'd like to hear what you have to say. Lastly, if you want to help support the channel, please visit our site, www.diyguitarpedals.com.au, and check out our kits and PCBs, especially the 10-minute uh, buffer, uh, which we'll leave a link in the description below. So, until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.